வணக்கம் ஐ ஒன்ஸ் அகைன் வெல்கம் டு த நெக்ஸ்ட் எடிஷன் ஆஃப் பீர் ரிவ்யூ கைட்லைன்ஸ் டூ தௌசண்ட் டுவெண்ட்டி டூ அண்ட் வி ஆர் ஜஸ்ட் டிஸ்கசிங் த அப்ளிகேஷன் பார்ட் ஆஸ் வெல் ஆஸ் தி கொஸ்டினர் பார்ட் இன் ஃபார்ம் நம்பர் ஒன் ஸோ ஹியர் நவ் வி ஆர் அண்ட் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் தி பார்ட் பி ஆஃப் தேர்ட் தட் இஸ் அக்செப்டன்ஸ் ஆஃப் அக்செப்டன்ஸ் அண்ட் கண்டினியூஸ் ஆஃப் கிளைண்ட் ரிலேஷன்ஷிப் and specific engagement so it is a clear indication that every practice unit must have records for the acceptance of the audit so all the acceptance of the audit that you have to follow next one is what are the continuance so you have to retain your client that is practice unit has to retain the client and they have to do it so what are the things that they are having what are the procedures everything we have to Uh, report here in part b 3 of the questioner aspect on standard on quality control so point number 1 whether practice unit documents the decision taken relating to acceptance and continuance of client relationship engagement so it's a clear indication that all the practice unit should document at the time of accepting any uh, client at the time of continuing the client what are the decisions that they have taken everything should be properly documented in the form of next point number 1 uh does the practice unit um one second does the does the does the practice unit maintain the client uh engagement acceptance and continuance form so is there any separate engagement is there whether uh, you, they are following it or not that has to be clearly documented next one is who is responsible for completing the client engagement and acceptance and continuance form so what is the procedures to be adopted with reference to the engagement and acceptance second one is who is responsible uh, for the uh, continuance of the form and the third point is if there is no such thing how the client engagement has been accept has been documented please elaborate so that means that there is no client engagement letter or any acceptance for the continuation uh, then if there is no such policy or there is no such uh, procedures how you engage those clients that also to be clarified to their ica through this questionnaire format which of the following processes does the practice unit have in place when accepting and deciding to continue the client relationship so what is the process to accept the client what is the process to continue the client relationship that has to be clearly mentioned informing firm personnel of the policies and procedures for accepting and continuing because the practice unit head will not be there so it the work will be handled or will be handled by the personal of the uh, practice unit so what is the policies and procedures based on which a client is being accepted for the audit towards engagement and how they have to continue with the clients that has to be clearly informed to the personal who is uh, personal who are handling the acceptance and continuing job usage of client acceptance engage engagement acceptance form so for this the uh, uh, the practice unit has to prepare a checklist uh, the base based on which you have to accept and the base based on which you have to engage the work that is a checklist as obtaining evaluating the relevant information so either before accepting or continuing the client so that means there should be a swot analysis for both the client that is strength weakness opportunity and threat and all the information should we received by the practice unit about the client then performing background checks for the business key management personnel sister concerns and other persons in question so what is the background of the client should also be discussed should also be known to the practice unit and what about the integrity of the client that is also very much important suppose if the client uh, is a part of uh, some terrorist group and if you are the auditor then you will be also held responsible so you should also check the integrity of the client 
So the integrity of the client, whether to go and get the loan and after getting the loan, whether the client is going to cheat the bank. And if you are a party as an auditor to the client, whether you will be in trouble, everything will be there. So the utmost important, whether you are doing the service to the client or not, you must have the integrity of the client. You must have the info, all the information about the integrity of the client. Then communicate with the uh, previous auditor when required or recommended by the professional standards. Suppose uh, if you are if you are an uh, auditor for a bank uh, and last year the audit would have been done by some other auditor, so you have to communicate with the previous auditor. Sir, do you have any objection uh, that I am going to take up this audit? So you have to communicate with the previous auditor. So communication with the previous audit is very much important. And if you are deviate from this then you will be held responsible under the code of ethics. Then evaluating the risk of providing services to clients for which the firm's objectivity or independence may be impaired. Suppose if you are giving, practice unit is giving some uh, service to the client, whether that is against the uh, I mean independence of uh, the practice unit, If whether that uh, service affects, whether the risk of providing the service to the client affects the independence. So that also to be specifically mentioned. And from point number F, this is very, very important. That is, whether all KYC forms issued by ICA are fulfilled. So KYC of the client, know your client, know your customer. So for practicing unit, the KYC access should be on record, should be on record. You should maintain the client that the practice unit must maintain the KYC of all the clients. Then who evaluates the information about the client? Now you have got all the information and the person who is in charge of evaluation should also be clear. So we have received all KYC, everything, all information have been evaluated by this practice unit my partner. So every detail should be clearly mentioned. And point number four, which of the following procedures of the form has in place for assessing its capability before taking up. What is the procedure? Suppose if any new engagement comes and you, you want to continue the existing uh, clients, what are the procedures that the practice unit is following? What are the procedures the practice unit are flowing, following? Everything has to be given in the questionnaire format. Evaluating whether the firm has got sufficient personnel with necessary capabilities and competence. So this is very, very important. Whether the practice unit has got the capacity to handle those clients. Whether the practice unit has got sufficient personnel that also to be decided. When all those personnel which the practice unit have engaged have the capacity, have the competence, have the, have the capability to handle those type of new clients or continuing the clients. Specialists in terms of a specific industry experience or certain skill sets are available if needed. Sometimes you are you may be the auditor for the some specialized industry, say sugarcane industry, paper industry. So the staff should be fully equipped. Uh, the staff should be fully equipped with the knowledge. So is there any specialists that are required to handle those type of clients? whether the practice unit has got the information, has got the source that has also to be indicated here. Then individuals meeting the criteria and eligibility requirements to perform an engagement on quality control review are available when needed, whether internally or externally. So the criteria to have the quality review, whether the individual individuals meeting the criteria, the staff, whether they are available, whether the, to consider the quality control, the person, whether they are available within the practice unit or outside the practice unit should also be specifically cleared here, mentioned here. Assessment that the firm would be able to complete the engagement within the agreed deadline. The assessment that the firm be able to, so uh, whether you have given some 10 days time, whether, whether it, is, it is possible for the practice unit to complete the work within the agreed time or not. That also you have to study. You have to give you a specific yes. I have, the assignment is given that I have to complete the work on or before say 30th November of 2023. And if the work has extended beyond that, then you have to give the reason. But if you are capable of uh, meeting the work on time, that has to be specifically mentioned here. 
Point number five, one. Does the practice unit prepare engagement letter documenting the understanding with the client? So the clear indication that the practice unit must prepare an engagement letter and that has to be duly signed by the practice, by the client. So the practice unit must prepare the engagement letter and it must be duly signed by the client. Next two thing is six, whether as a practice unit withdrawn from an engagement from the client relationship during the audit period. So the, sometimes the practice unit may engage the client, that is client may engage the practice unit and uh, sometimes the client the practice unit might have withdrawn the assignment or engagement from the client, then you have to give the reason why you have withdrawn. Suppose if the party, that is if the client, they are not uh, uh, cooperated with you, then the practice unit may withdraw, but everything should be properly documented because this is one of the specific requirement of peer review. Peer review process is one of the specific requirements. So you have to maintain, so you can accept the engagement when you don't want to continue it. So you have to give the reason why you have come out of that. So here, point number B says, what is your, wow, uh, when whose client, when which client you have withdrawn and which year you have withdrawn and the reason. So in tabular form, you have, uh, you have to give the reason. Sometimes some seven work, eight works you have withdrawn. So all this you have to uh, mention here specifically. Next point is, uh, did the practice unit face any issues relating to acceptance or continuous of the client relationship on specific engagements during the, suppose at the time of accepting the engagement or at the time of continuing the engagement, if there is any problem that has to be resolved, how it is resolved or whether you accept to that or not, you have to specifically mention here. Then after that, all this documentation part of this uh, acceptance and continuing uh, continuance of the client have to be under the custody of the personal or the by the partner. Then here seven B, you have to specifically mention that who is responsible for the custody of the documents. So this is what we have to discuss about the uh, acceptance and continuance of client relationship and specific engagement. So specific. So before accepting the engagement. Before continuing the engagement, you have to prepare, at this unit has to prepare the engagement letter and that engagement letter has to be signed by the client. What are the terms and conditions? Then in case of withdrawal, the same thing has to be given, has to be given in detail to the uh, ICA at the time of peer review process. So for this, you have to maintain proper working papers. Now we are going to see the human resources personnel. How uh, the team is there, how you are going to manage the entire show. For that also, you, you should inform, I say that we have got sufficient staff. We have, to, we have uh, the process based on which we have selected him, we have introduced him, we have retained him, we have given him some um, policy, some remuneration properly or not. And uh, this we are going to discuss here under the head, human resources, part B, um, session four, human resources. Which of the procedure does the practice unit have in place for managing the human resource function? What is the procedure? They say that what is the procedure to manage the human resource function? Does the practice unit have a designated individual to be responsible for managing the human resources? That is HR team head. HR team head. Is there any personnel is there? And who is responsible to manage all the human resource of the unit? How frequently the designated person or practice unit evaluate the practice unit personal needs? So that means the evaluation of, it's a clear indication that the evaluation of practice unit's personal needs must be undertaken. And who is responsible for that? For how many times uh, it is frequently reviewed? That should be clearly mentioned. Is there a formal documented process for the hiring a practice unit? Suppose if anybody is hiring a uh, personal, what is the document process? Does the practice unit have an established criteria for determining which individual would be involved in hiring process? So, criteria 
to hire an individual for the practice unit should be decided in advance. It has to be clearly mentioned. So this should be properly documented. That means there should be a proper working paper for this. Then has the practice unit laid down any qualification, experience, attributes required for the entry level and the experience personnel to be hired? So the practice unit must fix the qualification and what is the base of experience and how you have been selected to the unit, everything should be properly documented. Then what is, the, suppose uh, additional procedures like performing background checks have been put on place because employees so getting the information about the client's background, that is different. We are getting the um, employee's background or hiring personal background should also be done by the practice unit. What is the uh, checklist that the practice unit, they are maintaining it. So that also to be seen. Does the form monitor, maintain and monitor employee turnover ratio and identify the measures to keep it minimal? So employee turnover ratio calculation should be seen by the practice unit. Point number three, does the form uh, maintain minimum staff to partner ratio, partner to manager, manager to articles, client to staff ratio, etc. So what is the minimum? So minimum staff to, so for each partner, one staff may be uh, appointed as the personal a uh, clerk or something or some for two partners one person is in charge so everything should be clearly spelled out here <laughs> see in this you have to give yes no so this is not applicable to us so this is a reply you have to give in the question of format which of the following considerations that practice unit have in place to select the engagement partner and team required for engagement that is understanding the role of practice unit's quality control and code of ethics issued by the insurance in ensuring the integrity of the accounting, auditing, and attest uh, function to use the report. So, whenever anybody selects se to select the engagement partner team for the engagement, so for the for to engage the work, there should be a team, and it should be headed by someone. And whether the practice unit quality control, the practice unit quality control and code of ethics must be explained to the persons who are in charge and all, everything is related to the ICA and whether the, what is the proper understanding that is there, whether all the uh, quality control and code of ethics issued by our ICA has been properly understood by the team. Next one is performance, supervisions, and reporting aspects of the engagement, which ordinarily are gained through training or participation in similar engagement. So again, the practice unit has to have the training of these staff for the human resource. So what is the performance? What is the supervision? Reporting aspects of the engagement should be clearly defined. The industry in which the client operates, including its organization, operating characteristics, sufficient to identify the areas of high or unusual risk associated with the risk. So that means industry risk. Industry risk must be studied by the practice unit, whether it will affect the client or whether it will affect the practice unit also. That is also to be clearly mentioned here in point number C. And point number D is the skills that contribute to sound professional judgment, including the ability to excite professional skepticism. So here, the professional judgment should be taken by the practice unit. Whether to take that professional judgment, whether the unit has got the practice unit has got the skill or not, that yes, we are capable of identifying the professional judgment in a proper manner. So you have they have to give you a specific declaration. If you say it is not applicable, then your team is not having uh, I mean professional judgment uh, personal. Next one is adequate mix of different level of personal team. That is mixing manager, assistant manager. So the team has to be clearly uh, designed. We can say that organic uh, organizational structure should be clearly prepared by the practice unit and should be attached with this peer review questionnaire. How the RDT uses the information technology and the manner in which the information system are used to record and maintain financial information. Here, the RDT about the client who, who uh, I mean, they have to use the information technology, whether they are using it in the right direction or not. 
that has to be identified, noted by the practice unit. Which are, whether for that also is there any, I mean, there are uh, sufficient personnel available or not, that also you have to identify. Next one is, which of the following procedures does the practice unit follow to determine the capabilities and uh, co competencies possessed by the personnel? So, procedures to determine the capabilities and competencies. Whether the personnel has got, have got those uh, capabilities or not, that was also to be specifically reported as to establish the criteria to evaluate personal characteristics of such integrity, competence, and motivation. So the practice unit must have the capacity, must have established a criteria to identify the integrity, competence, and motivation of the human and that personal. Next one is there's a practice unit has to, I mean, uh, to evaluate the personal at least annually. So the evaluation of the uh, human resource, evaluation of the personnel should be done at least once in a year. So if yes, yes, we have done the evaluation, whether the same thing is being properly documented. So it's a clear indication that the evaluation of staff personnel every year must be there. And the procedure, how you evaluate them, that should be properly documented. Does the practice unit have any policy for assigning uh, responsibility of our engagement to an engagement product. So here, yeah, who is responsible for this? The, the practice unit has got so many partners and which partner is responsible? So he is called as engagement uh, partner for that particular engagement. Who is responsible? What is the policy for that? That also to be clearly mentioned here. Next one is, does the practice unit have following Parameters in place uh, to ensure that the, the knowledge of the personnel get updated on the ongoing process. So, updation of the knowledge of the personnel is a must. What are the procedures? What are the policies? What is the training that practice unit? They are going to, they have given to the personnel that should also be properly reported here. That is conveyed to the ICA through this peer review, review, peer review process application form number one. Whether the requires personnel to participate in the CPED programs, CPE programs in accordance with the form guidelines to keep updated on the current development. Normally, most of the charter account firms, they are sending the personnel, even the personnel, as well as the article clerk for the uh, insured CPE program and what are the things that they have taken and what is the whether the tallies with the guidelines of the form, everything should be there. So, updation must be given to the personnel through the training program of CPE. Next one is maintain track records of CPE status or the professional status as per the requirements of ICA. So the form has to maintain the CPE status in its record. Then provide CPE. What are the materials, course materials that they have received from the CPE? And if there is a digital content, on the latest changes in accounting, auditing, independence, so simple, sir. Simple updation is required for that. Whether the practice unit has sent its personnel, which includes the article clerk for the training to the insured or somewhere also, somewhere which have been recognized, whether those types of training have been given, what is the what are the course material available, everything they should have record and. Is there any orientation program and training program for the new IR? Suppose if anybody is uh, newly engaged, if anybody is newly engaged, they should be given proper orientation. They should be given sufficient training programs for the new people. What are the things that they are given? This is, on this day, we have conducted orientation course. On this day, we have conducted training programs that you have to give. Then employees are equipped with technological skill sets like uh, AI, artificial intelligence, blockchain, audit, and data analytical tools. So whether they have got the system knowledge or not, whether they are they are capable of handling the technology development, the say artificial intelligence, how to manage the blockchain uh, content, audit, and data analytical tools, everything should be properly educated to the employees of the practice unit. Does the practice unit sponsor any of the any of the skill tools? Is there any new uh, software has developed? Whether is there any new thing that practice unit has uh, developed? And uh, with reference to skill development tools, so that list also the practice unit has to sub uh, submit here. 
Does the practice unit provide access to the technology, infrastructure, and methodology for better enablement of day to day work? So, the practice unit must allow the personnel to have access. So, without having giving the access to the personnel, you cannot uh, run the show. So, whether <coughs> the practice unit has allowed the personnel to go and uh, have the access to the technology, infrastructure, and methodology, and it is on the day to day basis. And sometimes there will be some uh, restrictions. There will be some restrictions. And if there, if there are any restrictions that can also be uh, uh, referred here, and one point of information, one detail, and if the info, the space is not sufficient, you can attach the papers. You can attach uh, by way of separate paper. Then does the practice unit organize self-developed programs like group discussion, mock presentation, short reviews? By them? It is not the image. It's a human uh, HR team. They will take care. They will have group discussion. They will have mock presentation. Normally, we are having mock tribunal. So all charter accounts, we are having mock tribunal uh, presentation. Even we are uh, even I used to take the uh, mock bank audit, mock bank audit. So it's the first time I have conducted. So in every business, in every uh, practice unit, they should have the mock presentation. How you have to present to the higher authorities. How you have to present this to the staff, everything should be there. And what is a short review done, done by the team? Okay, this team is, this group discussion is correct. This uh, this person has uh, presented the paper correctly or not. This has to be properly explained. Does the practice unit have the policies and procedures for career advancement of its person? So every person, they want to grow in their employment. What is the policy? What is the procedure that the practice unit uh, has got? That has also to be clearly mentioned here in this uh, application form number one. Is there a system to evaluate the performance on timely basis? So that means the personal evaluation of the team should be done frequently. What is the cap? Whether the review can be done on monthly basis or quarterly basis or half yearly basis, that, has also, that information also has to be given by the practice unit here. Is there a fast track advancement policy for star performance? Suppose if any of the staff, they have done very, very, in a very good manner, and it's an advanced promotion, advanced advancement policy from scale one to scale two, scale one to scale three, because he has got that much of staff. Is there any such policy that is available at the practice unit that you have to mention here? So that HR team should be there, it should be engaged, it should be headed by some engagement partner. All the employees should be given the proper training and whether all the employees have got the, all the personnel have got the right to access to the technology and they should, they have, should have the group discussion, everything on the, all the uh, personnel should be evaluated and the time of evaluation that you have to undertake and what is the, Procedure to give the promotion, advancement in that career that should also be properly decided in advance. All these details they are to give here. So with this, I am just stopping my presentation with reference to the. We have covered here one thing with reference to um, uh, this one. Uh, yeah, uh, acceptance and con uh, sorry, acceptance and continuance of client relationship. And human resources, we are covered in this uh, part of presentation. We will make in another part later. And I wish you all the best. And thanks for watching this program. Nandri Vanakam.